Hello, everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. In this lesson, we'll take a look at a pattern of reactive architecture called the producer control flow pattern. You can get a listing of all the lessons I do in Software Architecture Monday at my website, uh, developer2architect.com slash lessons. Uh, this particular pattern is a pattern of reactive, reactive architecture that helps create what are known as self-healing systems. And this pattern asks the question, how can you slow down message producers when the messaging system or even any other part of the system uh, starts to become overwhelmed? And let me show you uh, the use case in which this pattern really applies. So we've got an event producer over here, and that's some sort of system that's producing events. In our case, it's going to be, let's say, trades. We've got some sort of event channel or messaging channel and a consumer which processes those trades. Now, in this case, oh, we got a trade, we process the trade. Pretty simple. But what if this event consumer starts slowing down? Or what if we start producing too many events or messages. In this particular case, what ends up happening is it starts filling up that event channel, that queue or topic. And at some point, uh, it, it will likely cause that broker to crash. So the idea with the producer control flow as an automated self-healing kind of pattern is to programmatically tell those event producers to slow down you can still process trades, but can you delay them just a little bit while we take care of this bottleneck? That's the idea of the producer control flow pattern. So let's see how to implement this pattern. And we'll also take a look at a little bit of source code uh, written in Java uh, to see uh, the underpinnings of actually how it works. So what we have is a separate component, usually a service, a separate service, uh, called the flow monitor. Now, the responsibility of the flow monitor is to monitor particular event channels and look for delays. In other words, uh, the queue depth, uh, the number of pending messages is getting too large. And so what happens is this. The flow monitor waits for some sort of upper threshold. In our case, it's going to be six messages. I know that that's pretty low. Usually it's in the thousands, but <laughs> that would fill up my screen. <laughs> so we'll just do six messages. So we just hit six messages. That means we're about to fail. So the flow monitor basically creates a message and tells all the producers to that particular channel to slow down. So I'm going to send a slow down message. Now, the next thing we do, and now everybody starts slowing down. They're not stopped. They're just putting a delay on those messages so that we have a chance to clean out and process those messages in the event channel. Now, what the flow monitor does, it still continues to monitor this event channel, and it looks for some sort of lower threshold. Uh, let's say in our example, it's going to be three messages. So we continue to process messages, and we hit that lower threshold of three. Now, the flow monitor basically creates a new message and tells producers to now resume at your normal pace, no delay at all. And now we're back to normal. And that's how this pattern works. Now, let's take a little bit of a, a, a view of some code to actually see um, the details of this uh, reactive pattern here of uh, basically creating a self-healing system. So let's start with the flow monitor. So we connect to the message broker and we set a threshold. Again, this is usually in the thousands, but we're going to set it to 10 messages. Now, we set a control flow flag that tells us we're either in control flow, which means we've told producers to slow down, or we're not. So I just continually keep getting message counts. I keep getting the message count, and I check certain conditions. First, if the queue depth ends up being greater than that threshold, in our case, 10 messages, and we're not currently in control flow, then I enable the control flow, and I'll show you that code in a little bit. Otherwise, if the queue depth is less than a lower threshold number, 
and we're in control flow, then we disable the control flow. We tell everybody to speed back up. And I continue to do this, let's say, every three seconds. I just keep checking the queue depth. Now, these are all different configuration parameters that we can, can vary. Now, the one thing I do want to show you with this code before we look at the enable and disable control flow is this interesting piece right here. This is the art of this particular pattern right here. And because you see, one of the things we want to try to avoid are very erratic systems. In other words, if we said upper threshold was 10, lower threshold was 9, our system response would look like this. It's just extremely erratic. I have no idea. It's, it's a flip of a coin whether this request is going to take three seconds or a half a second. <laughs> so the key is to adjust this number. Notice how I'm taking half of the upper threshold, which means that if this is our normal pace and I say to slow down, it slows down. And now I keep that number low until we hit that lower threshold. And then sure enough, it's probably going to climb. And then it goes up for a little bit, and then it goes down. But do you notice the behavior of that kind of system I just drew there? It's a little more predictable. In other words, oh, yeah, we're in a slowdown state. But I know it's in a slowdown state for mm, some period of time. The tolerance level of when we can go slow versus fast is how to adjust that lower threshold number right there. OK, well, let's take a look at the enable and disable control flow. How do we do that? Well, what I do is I simply create a message. So I'm going to set a delay flag. This is a simple map message to 3,000 milliseconds. So I'm going to tell everybody delay for three seconds. And I send the message to a particular control flow queue or topic and that all producers are listening on. And then, of course, I just return true, saying we are in control flow. Now, to disable it, I send the same message, but I set that value to zero, meaning don't delay at all. And now send that message to everybody and return false, which means we're no longer in control flow. OK, so that's the flow monitor logic. Now, each event producer also has to have some logic as well, because I need to receive those messages to tell me when to slow down or not. So I'm going to create a thread, connect to that message broker, create a corresponding consumer. Now, I'm just going to continue to listen on that control flow queue. And I get the next message from the queue. Now, once I do receive a message to slow down or speed up, I grab that delay value off of that message. Remember, it's either 3,000 or zero. <laughs> and now, I simply set my own delay flag to that value that is in that message. And I just start this thread and continue to do this over and over. Now, here's where it comes into play, because let's say I want to place a trade. The very first statement says delay. Now, this delay value right here, remember, is either going to be 0, which means don't delay at all, or 3,000, which kind of halts that processing a little bit. So the end user or system is going to notice a particular delay here. And then I go ahead and send my trade to processing. And that is the idea of the producer control flow. Now, we get an advantage, certainly, that we have a back pressure point and we're automatically being able to monitor and self-heal our system so it doesn't crash. That's a huge plus with this pattern. The negative, however, the trade-off of this pattern, that is highly, it is highly intrusive. In other words, uh, we need to modify our event producer code to, first of all, listen on a queue or topic for that particular slowdown message, and to add uh, that chunk of code to act as a listener and to be able to set those delays. And so that is the one negative about uh, this particular pattern, is that we do need control over that producer code. <laughs> All right, so this has been Lesson 171, the Producer Control Flow Pattern, uh, yet another pattern 
of reactive architecture. So um, at least now we know how to um, handle or another solution of handling back pressure points, especially in high volume messaging or event driven systems. So thank you so much for listening and stay tuned in two more Mondays for the next lesson in Software Architecture Monday.